Hi everybody, welcome to Mike's Garage. Well, I had a few requests for this and I finally got it done. A t-shirt. They're really nice. They come in a bunch of different colors. To order, you have to go to bigguydesigns.redbubble.com. Thanks for your support. Hi everybody, welcome to Mike's Garage. I uh, wanted to tell another story about Vietnam, about the living conditions there, where we lived. Um, they built a building, uh, a frame. It just framed out the roof, framed out the walls. Metal corrugated steel on the roof. It was really noisy when it rained. It rained the rainy season, right on the clockwork. Uh, every day, four o'clock, heavy, heavy rain. Uh, the roof hung over the sides of the building by about three feet. There weren't any gutters or anything. And the top part of the outside walls, the top half, was screen. The bottom half was plywood, you know, four foot tall, eight foot long. And that's how they went around the building. It was a door at one end and a door at this end. I don't really remember if they had doors. I mean, there was an opening. Uh, if there was anything, there was a screen door because there was no heavy door to lock or anything like that. You were completely open. People could walk through there all night long or all day, whatever. So, um, and around the building were 55 gallon drums, right tight up against each other, one after the other, and they filled them with sand, okay? Some of them were filled with water. And that was in case a rocket landed outside the hooch. And the, uh, the plan was, a siren used to go off if there was a rocket attack. Uh, they somehow detected that rockets were launched or one hit somewhere, the siren would go off. Two things you had to do. If the rockets were hitting close, you got out of your bunk and you laid on the floor, okay? Because anything that landed outside the hut was going to go up through the screen and through the roof. It wouldn't penetrate the sides because the 55 gallon drums were there. So that was one of the safe places. If the sirens went off and you didn't hear any rockets hitting and exploding, you ran to one end of the hooch. Uh, at the end, there was a concrete bunker with probably a four foot sandbag roof on it. Now there wasn't any doors on that. It was a, a room with a zigzag hallway to get into the room. There wasn't any seats in there. There was only enough room to stand in there, okay? So the siren would go off. You had to make a quick decision, run for the bunker, no shoes, no socks, underwear, whatever you were sleeping in, you just ran. And you went into the, uh, the bunker. You waited out till the all clear siren went out. Uh, by the time you got the all clear siren, there were gunships in the air looking for where the rockets came from off the perimeter. And uh, so when the, when the siren went off, you went back Rockets usually came in, I would say twice a week, we would get six or seven rockets. The rockets, I, I thought about when they were having the, uh, the war in Afghanistan and, and Iran, uh, Iraq, because the one in Iraq, the Scud missiles, where they just shoot them up in the air and shoot them in that direction, who knows where they're going to land. They didn't have a GPS system back in the day. So they just randomly put them on an angle and they shoot them. Uh, usually it was some civilians and, and what they used to do is the Viet Cong soldiers would go into a house or a couple of houses and they would take the families hostage and they would force the men and the teenage boys to take the rockets, go to the edge of the fort outside of the perimeter, launch the rockets and then run away. So they would run back to their house and say, okay, I did it and I released my family. Uh, sometimes they released the family, sometimes they didn't. You paid the ultimate price for that kind of a war that was going on. And the, the reason I know that because they did catch some guys and they did go to the house and free the people that were being held hostage. Anyway, that's another story. But the, um, the, the, the building we were in was safe as long as it didn't get a direct hit. It was nothing over you but a tin roof and on a frame. Uh, no plywood, no insulation, no nothing. Uh, at night, it would get 60 degrees in a rainy season. And it, to you, it was freezing because you were used to 80, 90, 100 degrees hot and humid. 
and at night it would get down to 60 and you could you just had to have the covers on to keep warm so um you also had a mosquito net you had to put the mosquito net down i um you, you couldn't leave your boots on the floor laying down they had to be standing up because of the scorpions uh, we did have a bad scorpion and roach problem in the building you couldn't have any food anywhere near the your bunk or you're in your locker or anything you had a little desk there no food uh, the scorpions would be around if you left your boot laying over the scorpions had a habit of backing into the boot and waiting for another insect to come into the boot and they would get it so if you did accidentally knock your boot over when you went to bed in the morning you had to shake it out to make sure there was nothing in there hiding and and get rid of it also got in your clothes you left your clothes on the floor uh, so you had to be really careful with that. A couple guys did get stung, gives you a really nasty boil, and it makes you sick for a couple days. But nobody really died from it. Now, the scorpions over there were the little tiny green scorpions, about two inches long. And you used to find them in the morning. Um, you, you had the mosquito netting around your bunk, front to back, sides, and you had it all tucked in under your mattress. And during the day, in the mornings, sometimes I would see them up on top, fighting with each other, running around, kind of playing, I guess. I don't know. But they would be running around on top of the mosquito netting, um, just trying to get into where you were, I guess, because they, I don't know, they felt the heat or something. But that, those were the living conditions. We had a lot of bugs, a lot of pests. Uh, mosquito netting, you had to sleep inside the mosquito netting, make sure it was tucked in tight. Be careful when you got out of bed in the morning what you stepped on and what was around while you were getting dressed. Uh, the buildings were surrounded with 55-gallon drums to give you protection in case of the rocket attacks. And like I say, twice a week we used to get rockets. Six, seven, ten, twelve rockets would come in, and whoever shot the rockets would run away. And the patrols would go try to find them, catch them right away. Um, so that's a couple of things we did. That's a couple of the, you had some very tense mornings, four o'clock in the morning, couldn't go back to sleep. At least I couldn't after that. You, you know, your heart's pounding. You're, you're just worried about the whole thing, what's going to happen next. And um, I'll tell you another story next time about the weapons because we, um, we weren't allowed to have any weapons on us in the barracks uh, because of another story. So I'll tell you that next time. All right. I uh, hope you enjoyed the story. Um, thank you again for your support. I love the uh, subscribers and the followers and the comments keep them coming thanks everybody bye hey everybody almost forgot hit that subscribe button we need more subscribers and ring the bell so you get notified next time we put a video up thanks for watching mike's garage we'll see you next time be safe